All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful <coughs> day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this gorgeous day. <coughs> That would be Friday, I think, August 6th, 2021, and uh, the little dog and I have a lot on our plate today. Uh, before we set off into our daily life, uh, doing what I do every day, and that's chronicling the collapse of a planet. Now, this is Friday. So normally I would be doing my ecological meltdown roundup rant, going over there to mongabay.com for uh, our weekly laundry list of assaults against this planet from Rhett Butler and the boys and girls. <coughs> but I think I'm actually going to save that one for tomorrow because we have a special bulletin here today in the Doomosphere where about half of you have been sending me all of these uh, articles that I guess came out in the past day or two. Probably, I'm sure, being covered elsewhere in the Doomosphere, but just in case you live under a rock like I do, uh, we're going to talk about the AMOC, <coughs> sometimes uh, called the Gulf Stream, that big uh, conveyor belt in the Atlantic Ocean is what we're talking about here, facing somewhere between potential and imminent collapse, depending on your level of uh, doomsday prophecy. Uh, so I am going, we're going to look at two spins on this. We're going to go from the New York Times to the Guardian and see how the, these two uh, these two well I guess New York Times being completely mainstream and the Guardian mostly mainstream but I want to see if there's any difference between the US side of the pond and the British side of the pond since <coughs> England could be more screwed by this than New York uh, so we're gonna start out with the New York Times Getting right to it, a crucial system of ocean currents is faltering. So according to the New York Times, the uh, ocean current is faltering, research suggests. All right. <clears throat> a slowdown <coughs> in the network, you know, the network of ocean currents, which influences weather far and wide could spell trouble. We are poking a beast, one expert said, but we don't really know the reaction we will cause. Yes, all right, so let's dive into this. <clears throat> the water in the Atlantic Ocean is constantly circulating in a complex pattern that influences weather on several continents, and climate scientists have been asking a crucial question whether this vast system, which includes the Gulf Stream, is slowing down because of climate change. If it were to change significantly, the consequences could be dire, potentially including faster sea level rise along parts of the U.S. East Coast and Europe, stronger hurricanes barreling into the southeastern U.S., reduced rainfall across parts of Africa, and changes in tropical monsoon systems. Now, scientists have detected the early warning signs that this critical ocean system is at risk, according to a new analysis published Thursday in the scientific journal Nature Climate Change. And if you go on this link, uh, they will link you over to, you know, to the full study from Nature Climate Change if you want to read all the 50-cent words. 
Okay, <clears throat> this is Nikki Bors, a researcher at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research in Germany. Quote, I showed, I guess she's the, uh, assuming one of the authors, I showed that this gradual slowing down of the circulation system is associated with a loss of stability and the approaching of a tipping point at which it would abruptly transition into a much slower state, close quote. Alex Hall, the director of the Center for Climate Scientists for Climate Science at the University of California in LA, who was not involved in the study, said that although the findings did not signal to him that any collapse of that ocean system might be imminent, the analysis offered a crucial reminder of the risks of interfering with currents. Quote, we are poking a beast, but we really don't know the reaction we will cause, close quote. <clears throat> Studying ocean systems is difficult for many reasons. One challenge is that there is only one Earth. Hmm. Wow, that is a challenge of studying the oceans that there is only one planet Earth, said Andrew Pershing, Director of Climate Science at Climate Central. Uh, consequently, researchers cannot easily compare two oceans one dealing with the effects of global warming caused by increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and another ocean that has not had to contend with that problem. Hmm. Dr. Pershing praised the analytical workarounds that the scientists came up with in order to study the ocean-spanning tangle of currents which are known as the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, commonly known as the AMOC. By parsing more than a century of ocean temperatures and salinity data, Dr. Bowers showed significant changes in multiple indirect measures of AMOC strength. The work is fascinating, he said. Dr. Pershing said that the analysis supported the idea that the AMOC has gotten weaker over the course of the 20th century. It's a critical area to study because AMOC epitomizes the idea of climatic tipping points. Hard to predict thresholds in Earth's climate system that once crossed have rapid cascading effects far beyond the corner of the globe where they occur. Quote, the big challenge is, what do we do with that information? Yes, he said of the new study. Susan Lozier, a physical oceanographer and dean at the College of Science at Georgia Tech, said there was no doubt that climate change is affecting oceans. There is wide consensus in her field that sea levels are rising and oceans are warming, she said. She also called Dr. Bohr's study interesting, but said she wasn't convinced that the findings showed that circulation in that ocean system is slowing. Quote, there are lots of things to worry about with the ocean, she said such as the more definitive concerns involving sea level rise. Okay, so that is the way the New York Times is spinning this story. So now we're gonna go across the pond over there <coughs> to England uh, where, you know, Europe is probably going to be the most impacted by this because most of the predictions show if this thing crashes that Europe uh, will look a lot more like <clears throat> this side of the pond in the winter that this is going to mean because you know all of this warm water 
coming up the Gulf Stream that keeps UK, which is at the same latitude as we are, much warmer in the winter. And uh, this could wreak havoc over there. Let's see how the <coughs> Guardian is spinning this. And my guess is they're going to be a little bit more doomer at the Guardian. So they have headlined their version of this story, Climate Crisis. <coughs> Scientists spot warning signs of Gulf Stream collapse. They put the word collapse right in their headline. A shutdown would have devastating global impacts and must not be allowed to happen, researchers say. Yes, we will not allow. We will not allow the AMOC to collapse. We're just going to make it against the law for the AMOC to collapse. <clears throat> All right, Guardian, how do you read this? Climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found, quote, an almost complete loss of stability over the last century, close quote, of the currents that researchers call the AMOC, the currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years, but the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India. South America and West Africa, increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe, and pushing up the sea level in the eastern, in eastern North America, it would also further endanger the Amazon rainforest and Antarctic ice sheets. The complexity of the AMOC system and uncertainty over levels of future global heating make it impossible to forecast the date of any collapse for now. It could be within a decade or two or several centuries away, but the colossal impact it would have means it must never be allowed to happen, the scientists said. So uh, there, so this is their quoting from uh, Nicholas Bors from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Research, who did the research. Quote, the signs of destabilization being visible already is something that I would not have expected and that I find scary. It's something you just can't allow to happen. Close quote. <clears throat> it is not known what level of CO2 would trigger an, a, an AMOX collapse, he said. Quote, so the only thing to do is keep emissions low as possible. The likelihood of this extremely high impact event happening increases with every gram of CO2 that we put into the atmosphere, close quote, or every gram of CO2 and all the rest of them that are already baked into the cake. I don't need to get into this rant uh, about uh, if we took emissions to zero today. Uh, anyway, we've heard that before. Okay. <clears throat> Scientist are increasingly concerned about tipping points. Large, fast, and irreversible changes to the climate. Bors and his colleagues reported in May that a significant part of the Greenland ice sheet is on the brink, threatening a big rise in global sea levels, 
Others have shown recently that the Amazon rainforest is now emitting more CO2 than it absorbs and that the 2020 high Siberian heat wave led to worrying releases of methane, which is the story I covered yesterday about the methane bomb being worse than previously thought. The world may already have crossed a series of tipping points according to one 2019 analysis resulting in quote an existential threat to civilization. A major report from the IPCC due on Monday is expected to set out the worsening state of the climate crisis. Bohr's research published in the journal Nature Climate Change is titled, quote, Observation-Based Early Warning Signals for a Collapse of the AMOC. There you go. <clears throat> Gets right to it. Ice core and other data from the last 100,000 years show that the AMOC has two states. A fast, strong one, as seen over recent millennia, and a slow, weak one. The data shows rising temperatures can make the AMOC switch abruptly between states over one to five decades. The AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of the fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. Wow, here we go again, faster than previously thought. Imagine that. <clears throat> Bohr's used the analogy of a chair <clears throat> to explain how changes in ocean temperature and salinity can reveal the AMOX instability. Pushing a chair alters its position, but does not affect its stability if all four legs remain on the floor. <clears throat> Tilting the chair changes both its position and stability. There went the AMOC. Just the AMOC. <clears throat> Eight independently measured data sets of temperature and salinity going back as far as 150 years enable Bohr's to show that global heating is indeed increasing the instability of the currents, not just changing their flow pattern. <clears throat> the analysis concluded, quote, this decline you know, of the AMOC in recent decades may be associated with an almost complete loss of stability over the course of the last century and the AMOC could be close to a critical transition to its weak circulation mode. Close quote. <clears throat> Lev K. Kaysan, a Maymouth University at Maymouth University in Ireland who was not involved in the research said, quote, the study method cannot give us an exact timing of a possible collapse, but the analysis presents evidence that the AMOC has already lost stability, which I take as a warning that we might be closer to an AMOC tipping than we think, close quote. David Thornley at University College in London, whose work showed the AMOC is at its weakest point in 1,600 years, said, these signs of decreasing stability are concerning, but we still don't know if a collapse will occur or how close we might be to it. 
closed quote. So there you go, guys. Another uh, faster than previously fought. You know, another tipping point, getting ready to tip. It's just every day. These, uh, you know, this whole faster than previously thought. Of course, doomers, we get a big laugh out of this. Uh, we're all amazed uh, that it's still holding together. Uh, all of this shit is slower than, uh, than I thought. Uh, but anyway, what a mess we have made of things on this planet. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse and get out there and enjoy this absolutely spectacularly gorgeous summer day here in paradise before the amok collapses before the methane bomb blows uh good lord guys we're done and i will be back tomorrow with uh Manga Bay's roundup of how doomed we are this week. Anyway, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, guys. With each passing day, Doomsday is one day closer. Bye, guys.